What's up, historians and fellow dorks? Back in April, the set Strixhaven School of Mages was released. Immediately, Jeskai Control established itself as a powerhouse deck in the historic format, and five months later, the deck remains at the top of the meta. Let's take a look at this deck. Why is it so strong? And let's look at some possible strategies to bring down this beast of a deck. Coming at you right now in this Everybody Loves an Underdog episode of Mana Rant. But first, I'm Hoshi, your humble historian, Phyrexian Praetor's plaything, and Tom Cruise's towel boy. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> and as always, I'm joined by a person who might be the first mentally handicapped person to ever make it to Mythic. He's a great inspiration to us all. Uh, top of his class from Sturix Haven's special education program, we have Drunken Dork. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, look at me now, Ma. Not <laughs> only did I uh, graduate special education school, but I got it to I got to Mythic. So <laughs> I don't know. I just feel I feel so accomplished in life right now. Yeah, thank you for that wonderful <laughs> intro. You're welcome. We're all very proud of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are. You don't have your helmet on though, which is concerning. Uh, it and... is concerning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to our other handicap co-host, Michael Paulo. Uh, uh, he's going to drop into the show uh, via video clips uh, until we can get him, you know, fully back on the show from now on. So uh, brace yourself because those are going to be uh, actual video clips. So, I mean, if you're going to listen to audio, that's the time to do it. Uh, anyways, thank you for joining us. We are the Mana Dorks, a couple of longtime friends, idiots uh, who love magic. We play it all the time. We've been playing it for most of our lives. We love the game. Uh, and you are listening to the Mana Rant podcast, where we talk about everything in Magic the Gathering, but we mainly focus on the historic format because that has uh, been our current love for a very long time now, almost since the uh, the format was ever released. Uh, I think we're yeah, the, absolutely. the longest uh you know historic podcast running that, that at least i know of we've looked around and definitely you know. the most consistent yeah i think yeah. there might be one that's a little older but uh we've been doing it uh since we started and we've been doing it every week and we've only missed uh one week so far so it's been over a year and it's been really fun yeah it's great uh so our show if you're if you're new uh thanks for listening our show follows the segments of magic uh so you know main phase untab all that stuff our main phases are going to be our main topics there's going to be a full breakdown in the episode description uh if you want to hop around if you want to just get to the serious topics and you want to skip all of our our silly other stuff like mana rant uh, feel free to do so uh that'll all be down there in the description and now with that let's uh jump straight into our show with our untap phase untap and our untap phase is where we untap some drinks so uh drunken what are you drinking once again monolith of appliance back there i got my kegerator <laughs> i uh dude last <laughs> last friday i was you know editing the show and then i was also editing um some gameplay that i did all yeah. fucking night like from you know, my wife goes to bed around like midnight, one in the morning, and then I just go to my computer and I, you know, either uh, play Magic the Gathering or I'm editing or like playing around in After Effects. Anyway, yeah, I fucking went to town on this kegerator and I, <laughs> I, ta I fucking tapped a keg and then I just got, I was like, it blew it. And I, I like, seriously, like I picked up my phone and I Googled, I was like, I need help <laughs> <laughs> <A -A. And laughs> yeah um but yeah so i got a new one this is a stout from a local brewery it's, okay uh, it's pretty good nice uh i am drinking a hard kombucha right now i am on like a low carb uh october right now because uh, my weight has been skyrocketing <laughs> recently so uh this is gonna be uh, it's june shine which is a blood orange mint uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like blood orange and mint, it's a very like light 
like refreshing mint that's like added to it. I, I really like it actually. Uh, it's a very crisp. Well, uh, cheers, Drunken Dork. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Mm -hmm. Cheers to everybody. And with that, we will go into our upkeep. Upkeep? Get ya upkeep! And upkeep is our Reddit rant segment, where we look to the internet for crazy people ranting and raving about Magic the Gathering, which is really not hard to do because this game- Not at know, all. <laughs> and yeah, is uh, invokes strong emotions, I would say, in people. And I mm -hmm. think um, uh, whiny is well, the uh, real essence of our, uh, our Reddit ranter this week. So uh, we're going back to Facebook, where most of the, the great ones are, actually. Uh, uh, most of the great whiners. Uh, so let's take a look at this guy. Uh, so this is on the Magic the Gathering MTG uh, Facebook group, I guess you'd call it. And this is Brad. And so here's what Brad has to say. I hate players who keep playing when they can't beat me, but keep playing knowing they have no answers just to deck out and make me play for an hour for a win in best of one. <laughs> Edit my problem is not making a deck. It's that with less what <laughs> it's that with less the man yeah. great great grammar Brad. Uh <laughs> yeah. He's, he meant to say less than 10 or so cards. Ah, there we go. Uh, I hear the, the yeah. idiot whisperer over here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, okay. It's that with less than 10 cards or so, uh, cards left, you know you can't win. I have more cards than you and more life. If you had an answer and your last card was not a land, I would be okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So this guy, yeah. this guy is, uh, I, uh, he's, he's upset because he is playing a deck that doesn't sound like it really has a win con besides like he lets the other person deck themselves, which, uh, I mean, that's fine. It's a valid format, right? Like I've, I played like hard lockout strategies like that where I'm like, oh man, where are my win cons, right? Like they're at the bottom of my deck or whatever. Uh, and when you play stuff like that, you have to accept the fact that your opponent doesn't have to concede against you they can make you yeah. find your win con or make you lose so yeah. you know that's the downside of playing this deck and uh with yeah. this i found i found i think this guy's opponent uh <laughs> at the same time uh let's cut over to back in the same facebook group i think these two are well, uh, well uh, hold on yeah hold on real quick okay yeah yeah Bre Brad uh -huh. Font Not, however the <laughs> fuck you say your your name. Font um, Not. Yeah. You entitled fuck. <laughs> All right, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, when I'm winning and I don't get to win fast enough. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right, and then here we go. This is uh, Steven, and Steven is uh, most likely this dude's opponent. And he goes, uh, hate these amateurs who can't build a proper deck, so they just put 30 destroy creature spells in a few skeletons. Like, really? <laughs> So this is definitely, this is the guy that's playing it, right? He's just killing all yeah. of his stuff. And then this guy, <laughs> they both hate each other and they're both ranting about it. I love it. Uh, I mean, they probably weren't the same opponents, but uh, I found so many people like this guy this week that are just complaining about people that don't have an actual like win strategy. They just like put like, you know, kill spells and counters in their deck, which in a way is a win strategy, you know, annoying the shit mm -hmm. out of your opponent until they uh, concede is a... Uh, I, I'm not going to say a valid strategy, but hey, it's one way to win. Uh, not the way I like to go about things, but uh, yeah. Uh, any any last words about our Reddit ranters or Drunken? Oh, yeah, I, I have things to say. Nice. Um, so um, this first guy. Um, mm. So yesterday, or today I was playing, and I didn't record it, unfortunately, and I almost record everything these days. Nice. Um, I played against a Throws of Chaos deck, mm. and... Um, they throw some chaos into um, Ugin. And like they went and grabbed Ugin. I was like, cool. I like games play out now. Like I generally no. don't concede anymore. Mm -hmm. I let him, I let Ugin play out. 
put him on the battlefield. I said good game before Ugin even put it on or put Ugin on the battlefield. Yeah. He said good game. Yeah. And then Ugin entered and nothing happened. Yeah. Um they timed out because I was waiting. Like, I don't know if they're like good game and they just walked away because they thought I was going to concede or something. <laughs> or maybe they disconnected. I happens. like to think they walked away because they thought I was going to concede. Yeah. And they fucking timed out of the game and I ended up winning because <laughs> they just fucking throw some chaos into a Nugan and then yeah. that was the end of the game. And then I won. <laughs> 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 it was really good but um nice. yeah back to this person um fucking uh brad font no whiny Fon Mc, not whiny whiny Mc, yeah. whiny pants dude yeah <laughs> i i mean i don't what yeah <laughs> like i i don't get it um so you're getting mad because your deck is super slow and yeah. people aren't just conceding to you uh-huh like there are reasons i don't just concede you know because stupid shit like what just happened you know yeah. what happens especially when like you're playing on the ladder and say you're like at the top of your tier right like you're at the top of diamonds or you're at the top of platinum you don't want to fucking concede for nothing because you never know what's going to happen oh yeah and uh, you just want to get that last win and so you can uh, rank up mm -hmm. and uh yeah this guy man he's he's he or she is something they <laughs> are something else and then Stephen <laughs> rothner yeah um Dude, I don't even know what you're saying. Who the fuck plays a bunch of fucking kill spells Who and then skeletons? a few skeletons? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what... I don't even think you're playing Magic the Gathering, dude. You're on the wrong fucking... You're on the wrong Reddit or or Facebook. I don't know what you're doing. Are are there skeletons in the game right now? Like I know they're in there, but uh, who's playing them? I guess I, I don't know. It's like the reassembling. They're in there. Skeleton. I know we have reassembling skeleton, but that it's not a good card. Uh, <laughs> I can't. His picture is not clear, but he definitely looks like a fucking boomer. And uh, maybe it's just memory loss, dude. That's true. You know, it's just old age. Uh, yeah. Just combining <laughs> games together and getting mad multiple times. <laughs> these damn kids all right yeah. well that was that was reddit rant guys uh let's go into our draw phase let's draw all right so draw is uh what we've been playing in magic this week there's a lot of spicy stuff going on uh so let's start off with uh our true blue idiot co-host uh who we haven't seen in a long time uh trigger warning uh he is going to be on screen now so uh <laughs> oh, God. yeah i know it's gonna be like the arc i'm gonna wait oh, i'm glad you warned me i'm gonna turn oh. my twitch off so i don't have to look <laughs> there you go <laughs> all, right. all right it's like staring at the ark of the covenant you know your face is just on <laughs> yeah it's, here we go yeah, brace yourselves right, everyone. thank you for tuning in to oh. episode 61 of the mana rant podcast i don't know why you're saying Michael that now Ball. we're I am coming to deep into the episode Episode, but. <laughs> oh, is this what it is? 61 of the Manorant? Thanks. Thanks, bro. Oh, that's so good. Thank you, you, you know, for you know, not so deafening yourself. So what have I been playing this week? Uh, last week I was talking about Blue Red Delver. So is it Delver? Dude, yes, could I that V-neck get out, any lower? So it's spin. like an <laughs> inch away from showing nipples, dude. I really love this deck. It does exactly what I was talking about. If you're if if you're if you're listening, thank God. Utilizing Delver of Secrets and Dragon's Rage. That is deep. Like not really our main because we also have arc light phoenix but uh, one of our big beats like our early I, beats are creatures and then we just kind of do tempo plays when he was in boston control our opponent out i picked him up from the airport and he had like and then just he, in he had like the bottom damage. two buttons of like his um, so, button yeah, up shirt <laughs> it's like coming down the elevator it's <laughs> just, just like all the way up it's very easy for us to utilize that and cast three instants or sorceries it was like the reverse vato you know where they have the like the top one button and then everything it was just like the bottom one Thing too crazy, nice. like expressive so you had to let that belly breathe, you know, dude. We have like the burn package in the forms of uh, pillar of flame. Play he's talking about Delver, by the way, heat. right now. And I'm really digging. Oh, holy shit, heat. he's talking. Really too difficult yeah. to fulfill its requirements, <laughs> and that helps us the mid late game getting rid of uh, the big, the big creatures that burn usually has a problem with. Um, uh, but some cards that I really liked were Consider and Otherworldly Gaze. Um, consider yeah. is okay. Really That's a good card. Good yeah, Consider we talked about a lot. Otherworldly Gaze, I don't yeah, think we really have, though, but I've been seeing that one pop up a lot. Deck. We're able to utilize our graveyard fairly well, um, especially things like Dra Dragon's Trage, Rage Channeler. Nice. Words. And... Uh, <laughs> You got there. They depend on having things in the That's how you know he's part of our podcast. Um, if yeah, <laughs> that, you know, you're, you're stumbles typical, over you just know, normal magic words like that. Package. We have mm -hmm. some uh, charter course 
and uh, finale of promise just for some form of a recursion and card draw Charter and oh, yeah, sideboard yes. i'm Throw still working on like graveyard. i do have a sideboard but it's a lot of like single cards that i'm just kind of testing out seeing how the meta develops and what this card suffers against but i have beaten gruel mm. i have not been mm. facing any just guy control and i know like we were talking really? about how that's um a pretty big part of the meta but i haven't seen it hmm. but uh i haven't i run into it all the time in best of one actually like that, like Merfolk, which is weird um but yeah other than that uh i'm gonna keep playing with i this never deck. do in best of one think? really i do all the time um, best of three all the time you guys can talk about it other than that back to you boys yeah. all right well cool uh yeah um what about yeah so so yeah let's talk about this real quick because oh. um I, I've been thinking about this a lot, uh, this tempo deck that he's talking about. Yeah, I run against it all the time in best yeah, of one. Me too. And I think it is it it can be really explosive, but I mm-hmm. whenever I see it, it's one of my favorite decks to run against. Yeah. Because it's garbage. I think it's actually like I know it's not bad, but mm-hmm. it's just not great. It gets disrupted really easy. Anything yeah. that disrupts graveyard disrupts this deck. Uh, um, spot removal just destroys this deck. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just I don't think it's that good, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. I th- I think one of the main problems with it is their creatures are yeah they're cheap and they come down, but they just they're very limited in what they can do, right? Like yeah, yeah. They, they can grow to three threes, but in historic that's not super significant, right? Like that gets taken out by a lot of disruption, and it they mm-hmm. really they don't get any bigger than that. I think like uh I mean they get they get the spells like uh, unholy heat. I think it's just like one of the best things in their deck. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. It's a fun deck and it's a really, it's a budget deck for, uh, historic and you can get in there and win some games. Like you were saying, he's beaten Gruul with it and Gruul's strong deck. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a competitive deck in historic, but I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I believe you when I don't think it's tier one, uh, right now. Yeah. I, I mean it, so it, it's good against, it is good against elves, I think. Mm, it's, okay. It can it because it flies over them. You know yeah. they do have the that one guy that blocks flyers, but yeah. it and it's good against off. um it it's good against a couple decks. It's just like the decks that punish it punish it hard. Mm-hmm. And like like recently, when I I mean I'll talk about it later. But yeah, I agree. I don't know. I think it still might be tier one because yeah, it has potential to win on turn three. I think, but yeah. um and four, it's just like fucking spot removal kills that deck you yeah know? i almost always beat it yeah uh yeah all right cool well what what about what have you been up to dude um so yeah if you're watching uh you can see that i you know enchantress because i'm fucking lame and i don't play anything else <laughs> but if you're listening yeah i'll go over it um yeah this week i i made it to mythic like at the last minute you know that i the season ended and i think i made it to mythic like maybe two hours before the season ended and um (laughs) mostly playing enchantress of course i've i love this deck it's really good in best of one i think it's really good in the meta if they have another historic event before the meta changes i'm gonna bring this like a yeah one of those 20 dollar buy-in historic events i'm gonna bring this deck there yeah that's smart yeah i think it would do well in there um because it just kills like my my win rate like you can see it, I think, when I record, or at least when I take screenshots. It's, I think, it's sixty something percent with that deck, yeah. which is really high. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. And that's, that's tier one. So I've been playing, yeah, for sure. Um, it's just because I pilot it a lot, though. You know, I play this deck a lot. Yeah. And, um, and another one I've been playing is uh, not Celestia, it's um, Bant Hate Bears, mm-hmm. which I don't have video of. So if you're listening, it doesn't matter. Um, and this deck is fucking sweet. It's really good in the meta. I found like some a serious flaw with it, and that's that. Um, like you were watching me play last night, actually. Yeah, uh, Hoshi. Um, yeah, yeah. I have like I don't have a great finisher, uh-huh. but um, the deck locks out a lot of decks. Like it's really good against what we were just talking about against that tempo deck. It's really good against control, uh-huh. and it's really good against um, like throws of chaos bullshit. It's like good against those style of decks, like things that are um, trying to draw cards, mm-hmm. manipulating their graveyard, um, trying to cast multiple spells in a turn, stuff like that. So I, I've been having uh, quite a bit of success with that. And then another one is Reanimator, like what I've already talked about. Um, I, you know, I, I was thinking mm-hmm. about this, and Reanimator is 
to me uh, is a lot like throws of chaos honestly yeah. um which if you're watching you can see it now mm-hmm. um maybe uh anyway it um the way it works is like you're putting stuff into your graveyard and you don't know what you're going to hit and then you reanimate it with a spell. And like when you think about it, like Throws of Chaos, you're like casting a spell and you're like, oh, okay, am I going to hit it or am I going to miss? The big yeah. difference is with my reanimator deck, I still have two twos on the board mm-hmm. and I have one with two twos. You know, oh, yeah. sometimes you just win that way. And one of, and like one of the creatures I have, it has Death Touch. And then the other one I have, once it dies, it comes back as a 3-1. You know, so and a flyer at that. So like I've just won with those creatures before. So I think that's a big difference between that and throws. And then finally, I've been playing Jund and um, or S'mores and Bacon Jund deck, which I uh, call Jund and Bacon. <laughs> Jund and Bacon, yeah. And nice. um, <laughs> and um, I, that deck is super fun. I've only played in best of one, but it has so much spot removal. And I think that's good. And I think the deck will work really good in best of three when I finally take it to best of three, mm-hmm. because best of one doesn't have enough, I think, creatures to like rightfully use spot removal like well. And um, but yeah, I, I think it's solid. I'm going to keep working on it and maybe adjust it a little bit. But uh, magic's been really fun recently. I've been playing, I think, more than I have in, in a long time. And uh you know, that, I think that's really the only way you can make it to Mythic, right? Is you just have to play a lot. Yeah, and, and, and enjoying playing helps, <laughs> you know. When you're it absolutely it does, yeah. Winning helps that too, you know. Winning definitely does, yeah. There, and there's a lot of good strategies right now, I think. Uh, and, like, you, you can see you're playing, like, multiple decks at a time and just being like, oh, okay, this is, these are fun to play. I like this one. Uh, yeah, the reanimator is good. That one's kind of yeah, that one's kind of glass cannony too. I I seen that you can grind yeah, it out with it with, sure. those, with those two twos and the things that you can get back. But it, it just like the the you know the Delver deck, I think it's it's easily disrupted by stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which is mm-hmm. which is rough. Um, cool man, that's a yeah, that was a pretty good run that you had there. Um, and then I guess to me, unless you got anything else to say about your deck, nope, so, nope. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, this week I've been playing. Uh, I'm all over the place, actually. I've been playing uh, a lot of uh, zombies recently. Like I came across this uh, Orzov zombies deck that I saw online, and I, I've uh, tuned it up. Like I think quite a bit, made it a little bit better. Uh, but man, it is. Uh, it's spicy. It's uh, just like you said with your deck. It's disrupted really powerfully by like graveyard hate. But man, mm-hmm. when this thing goes off, it is absolutely bonkers man like i've been having some great games with this deck unfortunately like i screwed up my recordings last night because uh i'm an idiot uh but <laughs> i had some some just amazing games that like uh, you know i'm playing right now where when you the, the the thing that really turned me on to this deck was return to ranks which is an amazing uh-huh. return from the graveyard card right it has convoke so you can tap your creatures to like uh bring basically any amount of them that you can pay the mana for back with uh, that are two two uh two mana class and below and this deck is packed full of zombies that are two mana or below and a lot and like eight of them have enter the battlefield effects that ping uh so you if you have a lot of them in your graveyard and you hit a good uh return to ranks you just kill them with ping damage so you just uh it feels so good to like fire off that return to ranks and then just machine gun them to death (laughs) with pings it's it's wild uh, and it does it pretty easily because, you know, there's stuff like Stitcher Supplier and uh, people are just destroying your deck. Uh, you know, they're, they're zombies. They're, they're not, you know, they're all two cost or below. So they're pretty weak. I don't have any uh, lords in this deck. No lords. So they're, none of them are getting plus. All the lords are three cost or above. So they're kind of worthless in this mm-hmm. deck. But I also got to play with, uh, uh, you know, the card that really made me want to make this deck, which is uh, Champion of the Perished. Uh, I, yeah. that's what I, you know, I Love was it. super excited to make yeah, a zombie deck because that card looks so sweet and it mm-hmm. does really well, well in here. Sometimes it's an 11, 11, you know, <laughs> like just off of zombies entering the battlefield. Uh, Liliana's in here. She's great. Uh, but one of the other like champions of this deck, which is, uh, just been shining really well. And I think it's uh, like, I would say it's the best card, uh, to come out of the last set uh arguably which is meat hook massacre which is so good in this deck because i don't care about killing my zombies if my zombies die like that's great i get to bring them back 
you know, and wiping out my opponent's board with it is amazing. Uh, also, it's really good against control, which doesn't seem like it would be because it's a removal spell, but it makes it so if they kill my creatures, it pings them too. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good thing of the aristocrats. So now I, I have ETBs in this deck, and I have if my stuff dies, uh, they take damage from that. So I feel like it's a very versatile deck. Also, you gain mana, yeah. you gain life from like, you know, your opponent's creatures dying with that. Uh, it's it's all over the place. It's it's got a lot of different angles to it, which I really appreciate about a deck. So there's a lot of thought and strategy actually uh, into playing it. So uh, what do you think? I know you piloted a little bit. You <laughs> you had some rough yeah, matchups. Yeah. So I I lost two consecutive games with it when yeah. I played the ladder. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I made it to mythic, it's like that's when you pull out the jank decks and you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, bring it on, right? Nice. And so. Um, yeah, I brought out this deck and then I won a game and then I lost again. I like the idea of it. I really do. Um, I think, um, yeah, I like, it's hard to pinpoint what the, like what the problem, there is something mm -hmm. that makes this deck. Like, I like how excited you got in the video, by the way. So you're like, woo! <laughs> Dude, it is such a fun um, game. <laughs> it's so tense. At, yeah, there's something definitely that just like, um, I don't know, it makes it feel like tier two because mm -hmm. because I mean, honestly, I think it is right. Like, yeah, it's still not tier one. It's like maybe one point five. Um, but like, I can't quite pinpoint it. And uh, but I did win that game when I won. I won actually really quick, yeah. you know, because they didn't they weren't able to get rid of um, the um, perished guy, you know, champion of the perished. Yeah. And so, you know, I just by turn three or four, I was swinging in with like a you know, a fucking five, five or something like that, you know, which felt really good. Um, mm. But yeah, I think the deck is cool. I really want them to just add a couple more cards that'll, that'll help this deck a lot. I, I don't know what they are, but I know they're there, you know, I, um, I think it's a, I think it's two, two cost Lords. I think we need some two cost Lords for zombies. And that's, do really those it. even exist though? Like, uh, I don't think those are, I don't know. It seems like every other, uh, you know tribe that's out there has a two cost lord i don't know why zombies don't get it right they're like one of uh you know wizards most beloved uh tribes and uh we don't get a two cost lord from them maybe because it would be too powerful them i i don't know i don't think so uh they feel like kind of underpowered but i think this jack is versatile but it, it's me it's being held up by like meat hook massacre and return to ranks really are what uh is super helping this deck out it's it's great i mean i i see what you're saying and i think the the main problem with it is the lack of removal uh because i'm packing it so yeah full of, for sure of creatures yeah now, i think i even said that yesterday yeah. too yeah i was yeah. like man is there any removal in here you're heavy i mean you're a heavy removal player though that's like what you any deck that you go in you, that's what you want you really lo like i can tell that about you you love your interaction thoughtsies is like your favorite card uh, which shows how much you want to like react with people's hands, you know, which I don't, I'm not as, uh, I do like removal, but, uh, you know, it's not my main thing in a deck. I want my, yeah. I like my creature utility, which is what really screams like fun to me about this deck. But yeah, mm. this is a good one. You can rank with this. I think uh, if you want to get into strategies, cause I, I had a lot of good games with it and I think it has good matchups basically against everybody. Uh, but you have to get the the right hand for it too. It's a little it's a little yeah. draw dependent. Uh, the other one that I've been playing, I, I went back to playing my humans, which I think is a better deck right now because it just disrupts uh, basically everything. Humans, we'll talk about that when we talk about Jeskai, but uh, humans are super disruptive uh, right now. There's a okay. lot of good humans, and then uh, yeah. I've been I've been playing uh, white weenies actually too, which is crazy. Uh, it's super fun to play. It's a zero IQ brain dead deck, uh, though, where you're just like, uh, okay, I uh, I just uh, ship my my hand out onto the board, you know, and then I just, uh, you know, I either win within the first like four turns usually, and like sometimes you can muscle through with it, but there's a, so many good like white, white cards right now and a lot of disruption, yeah. right? A lot of humans uh, that are really good in it, so... I, I feel like White Winnie's is just like, it's really strong. Uh, and uh, you get fast games with the two, which is great. So if you're like, you know, in a hurry to get your wins in for the day, White Winnie's is a is a good one. And it's a fairly budget friendly, I feel like, as far as, uh, you know, as far as historic goes. But uh, yeah, cool. I think that is it uh, for me. Yeah. So 
Yeah, let's move, let's move the fuck on. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that sounds <laughs> good. So uh, with that, we will move into our main phase one. Main phase one. All right, main phase one is where we're talking about Jeskai control, which is crazy. Uh, crazy deck. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's a great um, deck. Yeah, it's evolved uh, since the drop of uh, Strixhaven, which is when this deck yeah. I feel really rose to power. Uh, the the Strixhaven, like uh, what is it, the Archive or whatever, it just really like there were so many insane cards. How many of them have been banned <laughs> from that now? It feels like I think yeah, at, least, yeah. at least three. I think cards out what, of that. What has been banned? Brainstorm and then Bra- what else? Brainstorm that one that allowed you to look through your deck for like one specific card. Uh, what was it? called pact of uh something uh it was that was black though right uh, yeah oh Oh, no oh that card didn't get banned that's right that card's still in it was uh uh it was the blue one it was it was thos's thos's oracle which is what got banned but it was because of that card mainly but yeah uh and then also uh time what was it uh time walker time twist or Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The five mana, take an extra turn card. Yeah. uh, That Mm -hmm. one's out. And then, uh, you know, they already banned a couple other cards out of it. And then there's a couple other ones that I could totally see them banning. I think Memory Lapse could go for sure. I would love to see Memory Lapse go. It won't. I hate that card. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) it won't. (laughs) (laughs) I really hate that card. Yeah. Uh, But, yeah, another super powerful card from that. And this deck is using, uh, let's see, one, two three from there and then it was using brainstorm which would have been four and it was using the time uh walk thing so it was using like <laughs> so many cards from that strixhaven set uh, it's also using magnum opus which is coming from that set as well which uh i didn't think was going to be such a, a powerful card as it turned out to be but uh let's take a look at what the main cards are from the jeskai set this is the top Jeskai deck in best of three. This is the one that is stayed at the top right now. Uh, it's got a 60% win rate. It's a very powerful deck. Uh, they are running three unholy heats. They're running four express or three expressive iterations, which are very <laughs> that card's super good, I think, too. Um, yeah. Justice Strike, they are running uh, three uh, Lightning Helix, which, jeez, and then four Memory Lapse, Die in Hell Memory Lapse, uh, and then we have, uh, (laughs) uh, what is that, Trest of Talents, I don't know what that is, Uh, we have Anger of the Gods, and then they got Archmage's Charm now, Prismari Command, uh, they got Mizzix Mastery, of course Teferi uh, is in there, Five Fairy is in there, uh, they got Shark Typhoon, Torrential Gear Hulk, Magnum Opus, so this is just like a, a good stuff deck, I feel like. All of these cards are very, very good, right? Uh, uh- what yeah, it, I wouldn't call it a good. I wouldn't call it a good stuff deck. It's no? definitely. It's just a control deck. Yeah. Yeah. It is like it is exactly that. Like, you know, you look at it. There's no creatures in here. Zero. Which is why uh, I hope we're looking at the same no, one. Which is why that's not true. There's torrential gear hulk and I mean shark typhoon makes creatures. So oh, I don't think we're looking at. I looked at the top one in Aether Hub and it didn't have any of that. Mm, so may, I'm looking at a different one. Maybe. I think this okay. is the one that I, this is the one that I've been looking at in best of three or one. Yeah, best of three. Yeah, okay. whatever. It's fine. Yeah. So torrential gear Hulk, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I don't know. Um, this is just like a. This is like what control should look like. I think. Yeah. And um, we just have a lot of good stuff in our format right now. Yeah. And uh, red, white, blue, or Jessica or whatever America can take advantage of that really well. Mm. Um, I really. I, I think this deck is really, really hard to play against. Yeah. Um, and I also think this deck is really hard to play. Mm-hmm. Like, you always have to know what exactly you need to counter, when you need to counter it. Counterspell is, like, one of the... I know you don't think this, Hoshi, but I think Counterspell is one of the hardest cards you can play in Magic. Not Memory Because lapse. you need to know... <laughs> memory Lapse makes it You need it to know when easier. to do it. I, I definitely think so. Yeah. You need to know when to do it and, like, what card to do it to, even though yeah. those two things... I, 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 know, I, I, do, I do know what you're saying. You need to know the meta. You need to know what deck you're playing against. And then if you know yeah. the meta, then using Counterspells is super easy. 
because you just hit whatever their like most like their most uh, their win con is. As long as you wait to hit their win con, it's it's very easy. If you have a good control deck that has things like lightning helix in it, where you can kill something and gain mm-hmm. life, so this deck has a lot of like really good things working for it with like stuff like lightning helix and memory lapse. Memory lapse is just insanely powerful. I think uh, being able to put something back on top of their their deck. In the early game, uh, especially someone's mana screwed, that's the real power of uh, memory yeah. lapse, I feel like, is that you can deny somebody land, which is, yeah, countering a spell sucks, but not getting that land, especially against a deck like this that is going to be pushing forward to getting its land while it's preventing you from doing your early game stuff, and then it has more powerful late game stuff than you do, is uh, is really what I feel like one of the clutches is of, uh, of this deck. Um, what what else? Yeah, what do you think is the the strongest thing about Jeskai? Like, what is their like best win condition or thing that they have going for them? I mean, their win condition is just time, right? Pretty and uh, Mirun on our um, Twitch says uh, memory lapse becomes time walk if that happens. And yeah, that's basically true. yeah, that's um, a great point. Um, yeah, I think I think the best thing that any control deck has is time. Mm-hmm. It's just like being able to slow their opponent down. And I, I really do think the best card in this deck is probably, um, or that wins them the most games is probably Teferi, you know, cause Teferi draws yeah. cards, untaps lands, mm-hmm. allows you to memory lapse again, Yeah, you know, after you play it. And, Absolutely. um, I, I just think that's a super powerful card in the deck and uh, it really propels this thing forward. So that's why blue white was around for so long. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why Teferi, like like Teferi went away for a little bit. Remember that (laughs) he was like, it was like a reprieve because when Teferi first came out, like there was a horrible time in standard back when I was playing where like it was basically all Teferi decks. Uh, and then he went away the, for uh, the uh, three mana to fairy you're talking. No, about? no. I mean, he was in there too. Yeah, th- that was the worst of times. Was when both the yeah. fairies were in there. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, I, I, when he comes down, if he's not taken out immediately, basically, and they start getting mm-hmm. that, you know, they start untapping stuff. That's generally when you feel the, the like your gut sink, where you're like, oh, this is, you know, if I don't, yeah, top deck something very good right now, this game is over. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I think I think you're totally right. Teferi is by far usually the the strongest thing in these yeah. decks. Um, and and not only that, like it's also really good because um, we talked about this before. It's just like planeswalkers in general mm-hmm. like confuse your opponent, and they don't yeah. they don't know whether to target you or the planeswalker. And then sometimes it's, I yeah. feel like it's obvious, and sometimes it isn't. And um, yeah, it's just it just makes the thought really hard. And then on top yeah. of that, I don't know, like I don't know which one you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, does the one you're looking at have Narset in it? No, this one, I know exactly what you're talking about because that's the one that I play against the most, though. So I know which one okay. you're looking at. Yeah, uh, that. Yeah, I yeah, think the one Narset's I'm looking good. at is a little more traditional control. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so anyways, this, there's a bunch of versions of it. We'll talk about some of the other versions more in main phase two. W- what now we're going to talk about is uh, disrupting this deck, right? Like, so if you're yeah. playing against this deck, this is not my, my style of gameplay. Uh, and so I play against this deck a lot. So I spend a lot of time thinking about like how I'm going to deal with this deck. I know you do too. You don't play this deck. Uh, and so let's take a look at, uh, some disruption that, uh, there's been quite a few posts about this because this deck has been around for a while now. And so here's what the internet really is thinking that are some of the best disruption techniques against this deck. So let's start off with some artifacts. We have uh, first Graft Digger's Cage, which, you know, a one mana artifact. This is just, I think, a great card in Historic for mm-hmm. a lot of things, especially for sideboard, right? I don't know about main decking yeah. this uh, card, uh, but I yeah, creature cards in graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. So I don't know if this is super good ag- about against, uh, you know, the uh, this Jack, Jeskai, because uh, it's enters the battlefield right uh and then players can't spell play spells from their graveyard that doesn't stop mizzix mastery because mizzix mastery exiles a card in a graveyard so they're not playing it from the graveyard they exile it then they play that card from exile so mizzix mastery is 
gets around this. Same thing with expressive iteration. This, that also gets around Graph Digger's Cage. So yeah. I don't think Graph Digger's Cage is a super good card against Jeskai for that reason. Uh, do, what do you think? Am I wrong here? Or? Um, do I think Graph Digger's Cage is a good card? Yeah. Well, no, um, no. Against, against Jeskai. This? Against Jeskai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. And okay. I think that's what this person's implying. Yeah. Is uh, Graph, Dig- Graph Digger's Cage is, isn't good against us. Okay, good. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, they did say, though, after that, uh, Lavinia. So I think this is their other option. A lit- Lavinia, Zorius, Renegade, shuts down free spells. Again, not good versus creativity, yeah. but can also shut down affinity. So, um, yeah, I think Lavinia is a little bit better. Um, I still I think the next one is the best one though. Okay. Uh well I don't have it in the in the actual like thing way that they went through in there. I was going through artifacts first, sorry, but <laughs> uh so the ne- oh, okay. the next one that I was gonna talk about is Pithy Needle. Uh which is oh, okay. which is better, I think. Uh, especially against Jeskai Control. This this card's because uh, we just talked about Teferi is the strongest card in uh in possibly in these Jeskai decks, and they're in every Jeskai deck. Uh, yeah, Relic of Progenitus is great uh, from S'mores and Bacon, which is which is an awesome card. And then, yeah, you can do that in response to them uh, casting something. And I don't have Relic of Progenitus in here, and I should. I'm just copying down ones from, like, the, the internet post, but that's a great... Uh, a great artifact that we should have added to this list but pithy needle will shut down to it stops him from being able to activate his abilities uh what do you think pithy needle uh yeah i think i think pithy needle is great yeah i mean mm-hmm. against any deck that has a lot of planeswalkers a pithy needle is always going to be a good deck especially because um that is an engine in that deck you know mm-hmm. especially if they're running narset too has multiple ways of dealing with that deck yeah, and uh, S'mores made, made a great point about uh, Relic of Progenitus, too, because, like, that's also, I love that card because you can sack it and draw a card if it's being useless, right? So that is one that you can main deck, especially, like, in a heavy meta that's playing, uh, you know, uh, a lot of graveyard hate. But what I like about these, especially coming from it as a best-of-one player, is throwing Karn in your deck. <laughs> Karn the Great Creator pulls these things out of your sideboard, uh, which is toolboxing, which I am always a giant fan of. Uh, I throw Karn in a lot of my decks that are a little bit slower because there are a lot of great artifact control strategies out there. And so uh, let's take another look at a card that is, uh, you know, can be played in a lot of decks. And so we saw Jeskai has some super greedy uh, mana going on, right? Especially the ones that are playing uh, the uh, the new signet that's in there that requires three blue mana. So Ghost Quarter and uh, Field of Ruin, I feel like, are some pretty good options against that deck as well. If you feel like you're running into a lot, what do you what do you think, Drunken? Yeah, I think they're good. Um, I don't think they're great though. I think there's better cards than this, and like depending on what you're playing, like if you're playing two color, sure. Ghost quarter is a good option. Yeah. If you're playing one, if you're playing mono, then yeah, ghost quarter is a great option. Yeah. But if you're playing three colors or more, no. I don't ever want to run a ghost quarter. No, absolutely not. I don't think so either. Uh, but they are also running, um, like search for Ascanta. And so having something like this against search, cause that's another one of those nail in the coffin cards is when they flip search for Ascanta, you know, you're like, all right, well, you know, <laughs> pithing needle can stop search. That's true. Yeah. Pithy Needle. All right. So Pithy Needle moving up the ranks, right? <laughs> That's super <laughs> good card, uh, which I suggest also putting Karn in your deck for it. But uh, Pithy Needle is great. Um, all right. So Ghost Quarter. Yeah. Okay. Now let's move into creatures, right? And then mainly a lot of these creatures are humans like we talked about earlier. Uh, Thalia, Guardian of Therabrand. Super great hate card, right? I love hate love bears. Love this card. No, you love hate bears. This is one of those cards that's super damaging to them. I think I totally agree with the the poster on this one. Uh, she's she's just a great card. The only the problem with her, I feel like, is she punishes you as well. Uh, so mm-hmm. if you are also running anything that runs spells, uh, she hurts you as well. That one's great. Yeah, um, I, think, I think. Um. Oh, keep going. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say. I I, I think everyone really knows that that's a great card. But go go on. Yeah, so um, anyway, yeah, that card is really good, and I would main deck it in a lot of decks, especially, um, 
you know, best of three, it's not it's not as good, but best of one, it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, it just punishes multiple decks in the format. There's a lot of spell heavy decks in our format right now. And uh, even if you're running Coco, I don't think I don't think it's a problem. You know, you don't no. run four of those. Generally, you run two or three. Yeah. And uh, it's legendary. And, yeah. yeah. Um, I I think that this card is just fine with with running Coco in your deck. You know, personally, if you're running because you, generally hate bears is green, white, X, right? Um, but yeah, super good card. Yeah, for listeners, it, it, it makes non-creature spells cost one more, and it's a 2-1 with first strike. So super good human. Uh, and then, so next is another human that I absolutely adore. Uh, I just wish he was a little more powerful. I wish he had uh, more attack, which is uh, Dranith Magistrate. I love the art on this card, too. Uh, hipster Wizard, that is, uh, opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hand. So this is great because this like totally shuts down throws a chaos, uh, <laughs> you know, like usually you drop this, the throws a chaos decks, uh, they concede immediately. Uh, this works uh, against all those other spells that we were talking about. They can't cast spells from exile, right? Anywhere other than their can, they can't cast the spells. Uh, so this is a, a good patch card. Uh, now it is three toughness, it's a three one, so it's a little bit harder to kill. Uh, what do you think mm -hmm. about Dranith Magistrate? Um, yeah, Dranth Magistrate's amazing. It's really good in the format right now. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are trying to cheat a lot of shit out and, oh, yeah. uh, it's good against, um, it's good against creativity. It's good against, um, Throws of Chaos. It's good against, uh, Coco. You mm -hmm. know, it's, uh, well, I guess you're not casting no, Coco. because you're not casting um, those. But, yeah, yeah um, but it, it's good against a lot of stuff. So, um, I would definitely recommend, you know, putting this in a sideboard, especially. Yeah, I run it in my humans deck. I think I run one or two. Uh, in but, the main? Uh, yeah, in the main. I mean, it's a human. I mean, in the side. Uh, probably the rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> especially if you're going against some nonsense. I mean, Jund is so popular in best of three. I think even more so than Jeskai. Yeah. That this deck, yeah, that deck just works so good. Yeah, and then this is this or is that one, card. This is one that I didn't think was going to be super uh, good when I when it released, but I'm an idiot, and it turned out to be like I think one of the best cards from Strict Haven as, as far as far as creatures are concerned, which is Elite Spellbinder, uh, which is a three one flyer human cleric that when it enters the battlefield, you look at your opponent's hand, and then you can make anything in their hand cost two more, and it exiles that card too. So uh, it's, speaking of synergy right here, that last card that we had, Dranith Magistrate, if you exile something from their hand and make it cost two more they can't cast it anymore even if they have the mana to cast yeah. it because dranith magistrate doesn't let him cast stuff from exile so yeah. uh it's basically removal at that point uh so yeah, yeah elite spellbinder is uh probably one of my favorite humans i think what do you think uh yeah i think you summed it up this card is really good um it, it's good in, in multiple like um decks you know against multiple decks you know it's it doesn't necessarily have to be good against just guy it's good against everything yeah. really uh yeah great card absolutely okay cool uh and then yeah so there's a bunch of good humans out there there was a couple other ones like you you talked about the uh the the blue white one uh lavinia i didn't include here and yeah. here because like i feel like she's she's kind of more niche uh and who plays the zorius humans uh <laughs> yeah that's i play bant humans so oh, okay. like it, it was i don't i don't have her in there yeah. but yeah it was i thought about it for sure i just never see her and i and and that's why i thought about it so i didn't include her uh but then this one is what is probably i mean one of my best uh favorite white spells that's out there that's in our format which is mana tithe uh i think this is a great spell to play against uh you know control at least in best of one right because you can get mm -hmm. some amazing upsets with mana tithe especially against uh you know control decks that are trying to be greedy when they're trying to get their teferi down or something right they're like oh i can get teferi mm -hmm. down now because you know i have memory lapse in my hand or lightning helix or whatever right and you have one white mana they never think about mana tithe so mana tithe is one of those blowout cards against decks that are being like greedy and having like those really high level plays too i think uh so what what do you think about mana tithe do you think this is is too janky to actually include in your deck or uh no i i don't i you know i i'm like 
It's hard to say because, yeah, I don't think Mana Tithe is great. It is a good card. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be a good sideboard option, but there's so many better sideboard options. I don't know if I completely agree with you. I do think it, yeah, when it blows someone out, it feels great. I don't, it's, uh, I don't think it's good in sideboard. Uh, I disagree there. I think it's good in best of one where they're not expecting it. You sneak this into a, okay. you sneak this into a deck where they don't expect it, like a human's deck or something. They will never mm. see it coming in there. You have to trick your opponent, right? Make them think that they know the meta and then throw something silly like this in there. <laughs> and then you could shut down some devastating plays from them, like board wipes and other things, right? That are going to stop yeah. them from killing you. So as you get, you have to be tricky with, <laughs> with mana tithe. It can be janky, but yeah, if you sideboard this in, yeah. if they know it's in your deck, then it's useless, right? That's when it becomes bad. That's why you don't run a lot of these, I think, either. If they see it once, then they're going to start thinking that you have this. And it's easy to avoid if they know that you have it in your deck. See, and that, and, and therein lays the problem, right? Mm -hmm. um, is because, like, so, like you said, once they see it, they know it. there's a possibility. So they yeah. try and play around it, you know, if they're a smart enough player. And, um, and so then, what, you're on two, and the odds of you getting yep. it is, like, is one in 30 at that point. And so I, yeah, I don't, I'm glad you like it. I'm not a huge fan of it though. Yeah. I'm okay with running two things in my deck though. Uh, I like keeping my, uh, opponents off, off kilter, especially, you know, control yeah. players that think they're super big brain, right? They're trying to see all the possibilities and stuff. It, you know, one or two, if it's between, really shut them down. Well, if it's between this or Coco, mm -hmm. I am going Coco 100% of the time because like, you know, like Coco, I can grab something that's going to disrupt their either their hand or their board yeah. or the way they play their hand, which I think is really important, or maybe their graveyard, which mm -hmm. some Jeskai decks do use their graveyard. So, um, yeah, I I definitely I definitely like the idea of Coco over this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Coco is a great card, obviously. It's like one of the And it's really cards. good. I don't know if you... Did yeah. you include that in here? Uh, no, I didn't include it because sometimes it is it's good in the early game against board wipes right because you can flash in you can hold open it's, yeah also i the the reason i don't like coco against control strategies and stuff it is one of the easiest telegraphed uh plays ever you're like oh my uh my <laughs> the uh the elf deck is holding open four mana i wonder what they're doing <laughs> you know they didn't play anything during their turn yeah it's but, so but that, it's, it's so but, telegraphed but it doesn't matter against control though, because what control's trying to do is slow mm. you down, right? Yeah. So that so something like Coco is actually really, really good against control. It is sometimes. because like they're trying to wipe your board, they're trying yeah. to slow you down, and then what you do with Coco is you're like, that's fine, wipe my board. Now I'm gonna cast a Coco, and then here's two more creatures to possibly finish you yeah. off. Because generally that's what it comes down to with control is you're playing until like you have about five life and then you stabilize. Mm -hmm. And so that's why things like mono red burn can be really good against this. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree. It's because they're quick. And then Coco also is just really good against this type of thing because, um, yeah, they wiped your board. Now I have two three threes or something or, it, you know, it, so. de it depends. I've played a lot of Coco. I'd say more than you. And I played against a lot of control decks with it. And they are it's super easy to telegraph. And if they can figure the life total out, like if you can't kill them with it, they hold their wipes and then they'll do something like lightning helix to stay alive and start slowly pecking mm. your stuff off. So I feel like the, the main problem with Coco is it's so telegraphed that a good control player can work their way around it they know uh, they know about it especially jeskai specifically can work around coco and i've experienced it quite a few times where i've been decimated with it uh so that's why i yeah. like i kind of like the sneakiness of this but i see what you're seeing in general i agree with you coco is better i think yes. so that's but, my point but i think this is actually better against uh jeskai uh mm -mm. i think it is <laughs> agree to disagree <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh i think that's uh that's all i had for uh for this segment at least that's what the internet had for me except if for good control against jeskai go on what do you think okay so i did have one um i did have one more card mm -hmm. um the archon in our deck in oh, our yeah, yeah. um 
in yeah. historic right now I yeah think the one is that's also... that's in selesnia company that you're talking about that allows yeah it, um, it says players can only cast one spell each turn yes now that card is super um, good with coco so this card i think is really good against uh jeskai meta because jeskai generally is what they're doing is they're opting mm -hmm. lightning helix you know stupid shit like that like they're one two mana spells uh they're mana tithing into an opt after something like that you know like trying to slow you down and speed themselves up at all at the same time yeah and really um i'm trying to look up the card name this archon fucking just slows them the fuck down and it's yeah. really good you know like um where is it i can't find it anyway well, um i, I would exactly definitely suggest that if you yeah if you know what i'm talking about yeah. uh play that card the other one that i was thinking of was uh Rydain, the uh the god from uh, Kal uh -huh. kaldheim where he uh makes everything that costs four and above like two more to cast so that's pretty mm -hmm. punishing against their board wipes and teferi and uh and shark typhoon and all those all those right and uh the the gear hulk all that stuff it makes them yeah. uh, very hard for them to cast especially if you're like in a creature heavy deck it, it makes snow lands come in tapped which is nothing against them but uh yeah i yeah. think that's a, that's an interesting card too that could maybe be teched against them um all right, do you have any uh, last words? No, uh, okay. let's, yeah, we're going long. So, yeah, let's do this. Dorkish <laughs> combat. All right. Yeah, let's get into combat. Uh, take it away, Drunken. So, uh, this is the horseshit card game. This is a game where I name five magic cards. Four of them are from our beloved format, uh, which is historic. One of them is in, and it's up to this drunken idiot to figure out, and well, and all you other idiots out there, to figure out which one that card is that is not in historic. So are you ready, Hoshi? Let's do it, dude. I think I got it this week, dude. I think I won. I won last week. I won like oh, one man. other time, like 10 games ago. Getting so you know, I got the shit in the Getting back. Getting cocky. All um, right. What do you got, dude? All right. So the first card is going to be Appetite for the Unnatural. Okay. It's two and a green for an instant. It says destroy target artifact or enchantment. You gain two life. Okay. The second one is Spireside Infiltrator. Mm -hmm. It is two and a red for a creature human rogue. Whenever a Spireside Infiltrator becomes tapped, it deals one damage to each opponent. And it is a 3-2. Okay. Then we have Thriving Ibex. It is three and a white for a creature goat. When Thriving Ibex enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. Mm -hmm. uh, when Thriving Ibex attacks, you may pay two energy counters. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it is a two four. Then we have Narnam Cobra. It is two colorless mana for an artifact creature snake, and it says for one green mana, Narnam Cobra gains death touch until end of turn. And finally, we have Riparian Tiger. It is three green green for creature cat as trample. And it says when Riparian Tiger enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. When Riparian Tiger, uh, Tiger attacks, you may pay two energy. If you do, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. And it is a four four. <sighs> so kind of a theme here. Yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Uh... Okay, so I I know one so far, <laughs> which okay. is the Cobra. Um, I've played that. I play that in my uh, uh, my poison deck that I have because it has it can get gain death touch and green death okay. touchers are kind of hard to come across. So I have played that card, uh, uh -huh. and that is it. Uh, the other ones are <laughs> <laughs> are uh, kind of a mystery to me. I think I've seen uh, the red card, the human rogue, the infiltrator. He looks familiar. Okay. The riptarian tiger also possibly looks familiar the the other two okay. that are not i know there's ibexes in the format <clears throat> i don't think i've seen this one and I, I think it's pretty good with the you know you get two energy you can put counters on with it it's, yeah it actually seems decent like it could be played in an energy deck and then the appetite for the unnatural is um i mean it's okay you gain two life, which is pretty good, but uh, I don't recognize that art at all. And I, the art looks sick. I actually uh, really like the art for that one. So I, I feel like that mm. might have caught my eye at some point, maybe, even though I did not crack a lot of this uh, this pack. So 
damn uh pretty good one like you said i think i'm in between yeah the ibex and the appetite at this point uh, okay so yeah you seem pretty happy about that <laughs> i'm probably wrong um but let's go with the ibex i'm just I'm just whatever yolo ibex i feel like let's, ibex let's do it. Yeah, all right dude i probably lost right. um you are 100 percent correct yeah, you got it this week. Whoa! It was the Ibex. I thought I was going to get you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good Woo! job. Mm. <laughs> I thought I lost. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was tricky, yeah. man. That was a tricky one. I'm I, hurting. I mean, I'm hurting <laughs> hard right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, does this so make you, you feel better? Nothing. Yeah. You lose. <laughs> Good day, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck you. <laughs> really I mean, hey, you 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 had two in a row against me. That was that was pretty good. This was, dude. This yeah. was this was a tough one, man. I mean, I was basically guessing there. I I had some inklings in some ways, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that the only thing I thought was that one might have popped up in a in a counters deck that I don't play. So yeah, <clears throat> yeah, you were pretty close. Well, uh, sweet. Thanks, man. Um, may I make one suggestion before we move on? What's that? Uh, we should probably skip main phase two, unfortunately, because we are running really long. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Uh, it's all right. Well, main let's, phase two. let's move into it real quick. All right, main phase two is where we were going to talk about uh, some of the other Jeskai decks and uh, the differences between them and which ones you might be facing if you ran into those variants of Jeskai decks like creativity and all that stuff. But uh, I guess just look them up at this point. We've we've been going, <laughs> we've been going yeah, we've a been little going too long. long. Yeah. And with, with that, let's yeah. go into end step. And- <laughs> and end step is where we normally talk about uh, just stuff outside the world of magic. Did you have anything uh, anything to mention this week? Um, I was going. Yeah, I do. Um, Go for not it. outside the. So, um, s- starting this week, so yesterday, yeah. uh, or earlier today, I started streaming on my own Twitch channel. So, okay, um, I'll nice. put that somewhere, or maybe we'll have that somewhere in the show notes. Uh-huh. Um where I'm going to stream every single Wednesday morning, unless my schedule changes, mm-hmm. um, around 12.30 a.m. Nice. for about an hour or two. Okay. Uh, I want to start doing that weekly, do some get some gameplay in, and cool, since man. I'm playing a shit ton of Magic anyway, yeah. you know, I wanted to do that. And I was going to ask, Hoshi, uh-huh. uh, ask you while we're doing the podcast, Yeah. how would you feel about doing a little, like, maybe a couple games after the podcast okay and uh recording it streaming them you yeah, know? yeah like just get a little more stuff on there yeah. have some gameplay sure sure you want to do some battles huh all right nice yeah after how about today after this one all right let's do it dude sounds good all right yeah uh, so let's do that and with with me i've been i've been working on a coffee table since we don't eat at our actual table anymore like our actual dining room table uh we have a coffee table that we basically just eat on and i i just like eat over it like an animal so i i found these uh you know there's these other coffee tables where you can grab them and you can pull them up towards you on the couch <clears throat> and but they're expensive so i just bought the hardware for it and i've been transferring <clears throat> my coffee table into one of those and so i've been doing that all week i've got it to work and now i'm just varnishing it which is taking forever but dude it's so sweet you can just grab the coffee table and pull it up towards you maximum laziness eat on the couch (laughs) while watching tv so uh yeah that's uh i and i hurt my back doing it because i'm old and fragile uh and (laughs) and with that uh let's go into our cleanup real quick cleanup Oh, and cleanup is our social media promo stage. Uh, and so we have our Discord, which is awesome. S'mores and Bacon's on there making great decks uh, that we all enjoy. Uh, yeah, we are on YouTube. So if you want to check this out on YouTube, you can see our hideous faces. Uh, and then we're also on all the podcast stuff that's out there. And we stream this every Thursday for now on uh, on Twitch. And then we also do Twitch yep. gameplays and Drunken starting to do them a lot more. I'm trying to do gameplays, but I don't know how computers work. Uh, so it's uh, That's true. it's it's coming along. And uh, with that, I think we're just gonna hop straight into our discard phase. 
Discard phase. Drink them up, boys. And discard is our final stage where we uh, say goodbye to you guys. And, uh, you know, thank you for joining us. Hey, we appreciate a like. I, I mean... I don't know if it helps YouTube. People say that it does, but I know what it does do. It makes me feel better. <laughs> I like I like seeing that people, you know, are, are like commenting at least like, you know, following along with us and, uh, you know, it, you know, it means a lot to us because we make zero dollars from from doing this. And, um, you know, it's just kind of the community that we've been building. But anything else, Drunken, yeah. before we uh, get out of here? Nope. Uh, cheers, everyone. Let's pound these fucking beers and then play some games. Let's do it. Peace out, everybody. Right. See you next week on Manoran. <laughs> Just relax your throat.